Shots fired, 147 Maple Street. Request back up. When duty calls, you have to rely on your pistol to take care of business and help you out in the worst of worst situations. Historically, police officers have relied on SIGs and Glocks, but now we have the Echelon from Springfield Armory, the all-new duty-centric pistol, striker-fired and ready to hit the streets. This pistol is 100% all new from them. It's no XDM variant. It's no 2011. It is all new. And everything we're going to go into with this pistol, they have truly thought out for the modern day police officer and somebody using this pistol for serious self-defense usage. Starting off, the serrations on the pistol. Up here we have front cocking serrations, which are aggressive. They're honed, they're smooth. There's no rough edges on them whatsoever. And then they're calling it a trench system. So basically the trench, what it does is starting at the, the muzzle of the gun itself, it's actually a little bit fatter than it cones down into a slimmer profile right before the chamber. And what that does, basically it's like an acceleration or deceleration ramp and going into it for front press checks or anything like that, it gives you a little bit better grip and then it flares out. So if your hands are wet, dirty, muddy, bloody, or what, what have you, if you're wearing gloves, your hands won't be slipping off that. It is a really, really nice feel to that. On the rear of the gun then, you have the similar cocking serrations, but there's also a flare on the rear of the gun. So if you're somebody who grabs from the rear to slingshot it, Okay, you can grab, you can literally grab those almost like what you see from HK in the VP9, except these are pronounced, they're not plastic molded ones, they're machined into the slide. Machining work on the slide looks absolutely fantastic. Again, with the slide itself is truly where they have changed the game when it comes to optics mounting systems. The only other company that comes relatively close to what Springfield is doing with this is Shadow Systems and their multi-optic system. Springfield has the VIZ system or variable interface system. What it means is that there's actually pins that go into the slide itself like recoil bosses, except you can switch them and mount up to 30 different optics on this pistol without the use of any plates. So that you get pins, for recoil, and then you just simply use the standard screws that come with the optic itself from the manufacturer. On this pistol, you see we have a Trigicon RMR. Going through the spec sheet, I was able to look that up. They do actually even will have acro plates. So if you wanna mount something like a Steiner MPS or an acro or your 509Ts, they'll be able to go on here in the future and they'll have that stuff for this. So if you're somebody who wants to run a closed emitter optic, that's gonna be available to you and it sits very low. I get a very good lower one-third co-witness with the u-notch rear sight and the tritium lamp green front sight there is a really really nice sight picture through there it's not too tall it's not too low it's just enough that if i had to use the iron sights because my red dot failed i could do that and they did a very nice deep cut on here as well so when you think about it and them adding recoil bosses and posts like that in here using the screws that the, so let's say the optic comes with and they've designed to be strong for that optic, makes this optic itself and the system so it's not something like you can't rack it off items, you can't drop it possibly. You know, in law enforcement, you know, you might get in a scuffle, you might wrestle around with somebody, and you put that extra torque and let's say pressure on the side of an optic, whatever have you, you could break things off. And SIG and Glock, the MOS system, everybody thinks it's crappy, frankly, and SIG doesn't even use any recoil bosses. So Springfield's coming to the game right out of the gate with this pistol, they took a while to come out with, but they thought of everything. And it's really good to see that they're building a duty-centric pistol that's built for hard use. Outside of the slide, this is a four and a half inch cold hammer force barrel on here. I'm sure it'll be accurate. You know, I've always made the statement with striker fire pistols or pistols in general, it's highly unlikely that the average shooter can outshoot that pistol and be more accurate than the pistol is actually capable of because you have sure air that gets introduced to it. So you have that barrel, it has a captive recoil spring system. It is a flat wire recoil spring. It is not like I say dual captive or anything like that. It's just one single rate spring. And then the slide frame to fit, you know, it's, it's smooth. It's very smooth for a striker fire pistol. And that's really nice to see. And if you could see it well enough, the slide and the frame sit very low in your hand. Identical in my opinion to what Glock has or what Shadow Systems does with their pistols. And that it sits very low in your hand. It doesn't sit higher like a SIG or a Walther. It sits nice and low, which under recoil, that really helps mitigate that recoil and keeps your pistol feel like it's shooting a little bit flatter. I have not shot this pistol yet. We'll do a full range report here on this thing after I'm done talking about it, and we'll see how it shoots. 
Okay, but now with the frame, more special things come to the game. But the frame itself has a grip texture that is identical to what you find on Springfield's Hellcat pistols. It's very grippy. It's not something that like when it's against you, it feels like it's gonna chew you up, but as soon as you put your hand on it and you clamp down on it, it's very grippy. There's no, you know, it doesn't feel like it's gonna slide. And what you can see on the side of the pistol is they actually have index points or reference points that they're calling them that are, let's say like a small like gas pedal or ledge and it's on both sides of the pistol. So whether you're a right-handed or a left-handed shooter, you can utilize that. Again, the only other company in the game that does that is the highly modified, frankly, Shadow Systems pistols, which are much better than any Glock pistol they've ever made. And then on the side, you have a standard takedown lever. That means there is no pull on the trigger in order to basically disassemble this pistol. So you can simply pull that lever turn it, slide the uh, the slide right off the pistol, and then you're not having to pull the trigger like you see with your Glock pistols. You know, in some agencies, they're very against that because frankly, some officers just don't train. They don't really have the right mindset, and there have been ADs because they pulled the trigger to disassemble the pistol. I know it sounds stupid, but it happens. Okay, and they put texturing across both of those. So when you get a nice two-handed grip, whether it's you know left or right-handed, your hands fit the pistol really, really well. Down here on the side, you have a ambi mag release on here, so you can use it left or right-handed. There's no switching it whatsoever. You know, I actually don't really even have to break my grip in order to hit that release. Okay, and then they have good steel magazines, but. You know, I'm not breaking my grip whatsoever to hit that button, which a lot of pistols I have to do that. SIG 320s in general I do. I do carry a 320 for duty use, so I'm very familiar with it, but I do have to break my grip to do, and even some of the Glocks I have to, to hit that button right. And with this one, you'll see my hand is on high as a pistol I normally would, okay? And I'm not breaking it whatsoever to actually, let's say, release that magazine. The rest of the frame though, texturing wise, you can change the frames on these like you can with a 320. These pistols are so new to the market, you're not gonna have this plethora of aftermarket options out there. However, this is a small module. This is the medium size module. And then you can get a large size module for the pistol as well. And if you're familiar with the 320, I mean, they're frankly identical as that goes, except these, again, have AMBI magazine releases. Continuing with the AMBI features here on the lower receiver part of the firearm, you do have an ambi slide stop or slide release lever. It's on both sides. At first, when I kind of looked at pictures of this pistol before we got it, I was like, ah, I don't know how I'm gonna like that. I think it's almost too small, but frankly, it's just the right size. Uh, it's very similar to the size of a SIG, except it doesn't kind of like come out and go down. It just kind of comes out a little bit and it's like a nub. And it's just, it's honestly, it's just the right size. Even when I'll probably wear gloves today and shoot this, I don't think there's gonna be any issues and it fits very, very well. And then the actual, let's say, grip angle itself for the pistol, it's like what you'd see from SIG or even like, it, I don't think it's quite as steep as a Glock, but I also don't think it's quite as, let's say, 1911-ish as a SIG. It's somewhere right in between, I'd say. But magazines, you know, they go into the pistol easy here on the bottom. Uh, the magwell itself isn't funneled very much. It's very similar to what you see on your standard 320 and a standard Glock. Um, it's not, if you're familiar with Gen 5 OMOS, it's very similar to that. I wish it was more pronounced for myself because I, you know, you can obviously reload faster and easier with a larger magwell, but it's very serviceable and very usable. And since this pistol's so new, you can, you can expect to see aluminum mag wells and things like that come out for this pistol because Springfield is a major manufacturer and it's, let's say, good for other companies to come out for stuff like that because it makes them a bunch of money too, okay? And then down here, like I said, it's like SIG and you can switch these out. That means that the fire control unit like SIG has, this is called the COG or Central Operating Group. What that means, turn the takedown lever, pull the takedown lever out, and you can take the whole entire chassis system out of this pistol put it in this grip and do it within seconds. We will not be showing you that today on camera because it's something like usually gets us in trouble with the YouTubes, but not a big deal because it's a very easy thing to do. It's in the operating manual and it's something that I think anybody with a little bit of firearms knowledge can do so safely. Getting more so into the frame because again, they thought about everything it seems like, okay? There's a nice undercut underneath the trigger well or trigger guard here. And then on the very bottom, they've textured it. So when you get your firm two-handed grip, you can actually feel that hit your first knuckle on your support hand. And what that is, is when you put it up there, it's almost like a reference point or an index point. And then you can feel as soon as you get a good grip, it's there for you, okay? And that's really nice to have. And then the rest of it is a standard 1913 Picatinny rail, which you see we have a Surefire X300 on here that fits the pistol very well. The rest of the points about the frame, two magazines here, 
They are, one is a 17 round that you get and the other one's a 20 round. Basically, you can make both of them 17 round mags if you want, or both of them can be 20 round magazines with a simple, let's say, metal plate and then a, uh, a bottom extended base plate per se. So make some 20 rounds here or 17 rounds, depending on what you have. Now, obviously for myself, you see I have two 20 rounds here. With the 20 round magazines, with that extended base pad on there, it makes your reloads easier, makes it pulling out of your belt and reloading a lot easier for yourself. And I highly recommend if you're somebody that's gonna use this pistol for duty use or self-defense, take the magazine, throw those on there. You get a few extra rounds, obviously, and then it'll fit. But if you're somebody, let's say has to use closed top or let's say button top, you know, duty mag pouches, they won't usually hold magazines like this. And so obviously you'll have to use the 17 rounds, but it's good that they have it in there for that type of user also. One of the absolute finest parts about this pistol, okay, besides the fact it has low bore access, besides the fact it has a bunch of, let's say, exclusive things to this new pistol, like the, the Viz system, the COG system on here, is that the trigger is hands down better than the two major competitors in the law enforcement duty pistol market, that being Glock and SIG. Smith & Wesson is used, it's not very popular, I hardly ever see them, it's in K's, Good pistols, hardly ever see them. Walters have the best triggers on the market. Never see them in duty usage. I never see them on the streets for, our, for agencies around me. I work in a very busy area. I see a lot of different agencies and officers and I never see them. But I do see a lot of SIGs. I do see a lot of Glocks and I do see XDMs. And for all the shortcomings of, of an XDM, this thing makes up for, let's say, all the bad years for everybody that hated the XDM pistol because I know a lot of folks that didn't like it, myself included, but this new Echelon, is a winner. And one of the best parts about this pistol, okay, you have a trigger that's flat faced and bladed. So it has a trigger safety per se on it, unlike what you see on SIG, which is more built into the slide and the frame itself. So it has a blade on there, a lot like you see with a Glock or even Walther. Okay, so you take it back, all right, and you get a little bit of resistance, a little bit of mush right there, but then you're at a firm and defined wall that has no creep, and then it breaks. The trigger itself, I'd say is about four and a half pounds, you know, if not, you know, five, but it's, it's a very crisp and clean break. And you're not, I'm not noticing anything like mush wise, there's no grit in it. And even if you want to pull through that first wall and break it, I mean, you could, there's no, there's no trying to guess where that wall or the pistol, the trigger itself is going to break. And when you're, you know, let's say trying to practice shooting, you have to have a very repeatable trigger to be accurate because trigger is one of the more important things to be super accurate. It doesn't help with the whole thing. Grip sights and trigger is obviously the most important, the whole situation or let's say equation, but adding that on there and having a very good trigger can allow you to be a very accurate shooter when you have to make something like a hostage shot or you have to make a very precise shot when the seconds and lives count. And this pistol has that type of trigger, okay? I mean, it, it's, it's better than both Glock and SIGs by a large margin, not a little bit, by a large. And it's coming from a major manufacturer that is likely gonna be picked up by law enforcement agencies across the country, let alone for the serious self-defense minded shooter or somebody that wants to protect their home or whatever it might be, this pistol is going to be one of your best options now. I would never have told you that for the XTM. I'm being 100% honest with you. But this pistol is going to be a game changer. And I've talked about it a lot, we're gonna go out on the range, but before we do that, you can't have a duty pistol unless a company is going to make duty holsters for you. Well, who runs the duty market when it comes to holsters? Safari Land. Black Hawk makes awesome ones too, but Safari Land already has a holster in production. This is a prototype holster. We did get this pre-production, but that's a Safari Land ALS for Surefire X300 with a red dot, okay? Again, if you're a police officer using a duty pistol, chances are in your career or now you're carrying a Safari Land duty holster. I do, many others I know do. Like again, some folks I know carry the Black Hawk T series holsters, which are good, but Safari Land ALS and it fits. Okay, this holster is designed for this pistol. It's again, this is a prototype, but that means Safari Land's working on duty holsters and we're gonna test it out some today from somebody who is actually a current police officer. So guys, talked about this thing a ton. Let's get out on the range. We'll see how it shoots because I know I'm pumped to shoot it and I want you guys to be able to see how it shoots. To start out shooting this Echelon pistol from Springfield Armory, I'm gonna start out doing the Opata qualification. 
to start that off, it's three rounds from a close quarters retention and then you move back to different stages. I'm gonna run through every single one of these. I've shot this pistol just a very small amount to make sure it's zeroed. It is zeroed now, so I'm gonna shoot it. And then once I'm done shooting this entire course, the pot of qualification for it, which if you're not familiar with that, that is the Ohio police officers, you know, basically training and, and qualification course that you have to complete in order to carry a gun on duty. So like I said, we'll start this off with this new duty centric echelon. Third stage, the pot of pistol call is one handed shooting that's right handed. And after it's four rounds, the preferred area after you complete that, you transfer to your left hand, stand by for a signal at the high ready, and that's four more rounds with your left hand only. Next stage is at 20 feet. This is three rounds reload, emergency reload, and three more rounds. Next stage is at 30 feet. At 30 feet is three rounds in the preferred area. You get quite a bit of time with both of these for the last two stages. So just obviously you take your time, get your hits. Fifty feet now is two rounds, the preferred area at fifty feet. With the all new echelon, I just finished up shooting the Apata pistol call. I do have a perfect score. Um, 25 out of 25 is perfect. Shooting is not perfect per my standards. However, again, it is a perfect passing score, which isn't all that difficult to do if you train and you practice. But to come out and shoot that with the brand new pistol, this Springfield Echelon, really makes me happy. A couple things I noted immediately out of the gate with this is how the pistol points and how it shoots is very natural. For a brand new pistol, I didn't notice myself having to find the dot very hard. It was very easy to do. Trigger press and trigger squeeze and all that stuff, trigger is absolutely fantastic. The trigger by no means is gonna hinder any shooter that uses this pistol. The magazine release is very easy to hit. No issues getting that and actually making contact and pushing that button. I'm not breaking my grip. It's very easy to do and the mags drop free. And then after that, the pistol recoil wise, I mean, it's just good. It just, I, I honestly probably can't stress how well this pistol actually shoots. Honestly, the best way I could probably describe it, it feels better in your hand than a Glock, sits low in your hand like a Glock, but then has a trigger that's like a Walther PDP minus the Walther PDP's high bore axis, which is compared to a SIG. And then you take a SIG 320 control unit or the cog system they have in this new Echelon and you get it in a pistol that is low bore axis with a good trigger and an interchangeable modular system. So far, they're knocking it out of the park. Again, a couple of only things I'm really saying negative is I, I wish Magwell was a little bit bigger for myself personally. Um, I think it could really speed up the, the magazine reloads. It works, it's functional, just wish it was a little bit bigger. But enough talking, let's do some more shooting. This is a build drill, seven yards, 21 feet, six rounds, reload six rounds. A little bit of a altercation to it. Yeah, again, really, the, the, the only negative I'm finding is I want the magazine well to be bigger for myself. However, again, it's, it's really just a factory magwell. I get used to shooting certain guns um, that have a real enlarged magwell, and I enjoy it myself. Like my Wilson Combat Grip that I use on my 320 for duty has an enlarged magwell on it, and it's just big enough that this was a little bit bigger, it'd be, it'd be fine. And honestly, like I said, it works okay. It's just, it's not quite as conducive for doing speed reloads. Bless America. I tell you what, recoil wise, this thing is very flat shooting. Uh, it's very forgiving on the recoil cycle. I mean, and I think some of that, that, that thumb ledge, I can really feel, especially even the stippling that got underneath the trigger guard there and that thumb ledge, I can really feel how my support hand grabs onto those and holds this pistol under recoil. And 
I love that. That just it feels really, really nice, you know, and I think uh, good package deal, especially like today, it's real hot and muggy today, so my hands are sweaty, and I'm not noticing like any slippage or anything like that whatsoever when I'm doing that, and it just, grip-wise, feels good. So right now, the things I'm wearing, I have an HRT LBAC carrier with rifle plates in it, a couple rifle magazines that are loaded. I got two of the magazines that come with the Echelon loaded. Okay, so basically I'm wearing a full duty loadout minus my radio and a taser. I have some handcuffs in here, which so that adds that extra weight. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start here like a suicide. I'm gonna run down to my truck, which is about 25 yards, and run back 25 yards, do 10 push-ups, and then actually shoot the targets. What that's gonna allow me to do is gonna allow me to raise my heart rate, I'm gonna get sweaty, my hands are gonna get dirty, and I'm gonna see what this pistol feels like to shoot under stress. Because if we're gonna call a pistol a duty pistol, how does it feel under stress? I've shot my 320 a lot under stress. Um, great shooting pistol, this is new, and I wanna test it out a little bit. So let's get this show started. Myself managed to get the heart rate up to 142 there, which is obviously a good mark to get it to. Kind of puts you under some stress a little bit. You'll see the, the grip itself is dirty, hands are dirty. The pistol, not noticing any issues whatsoever. It's shooting great, accurate, easy to control. Hands are dirty, the pistol's a little bit dirty now, and still is feeling good. I mean, the pistol itself, what I'm noticing is like with the red dot, an RMR has a fairly small window. Well, you compare it to like something like a Delta Point Pro or a Romeo or even an SRO, I'm not really seeing the dot leave that window, which is something that I, previously I was really only seeing from, let's say like my DR920L or even an AXG Legion. And this thing is overall, it's a lot, a lot of fun to shoot. And really it's a duty pistol that doesn't need anything. Maybe a Magwell for personal opinion, you know, but a trigger, no. This trigger's not gonna hinder you. You can still be a very, very good shooter with this trigger. It's outside of a Walther PDP, best duty trigger on the market, hands down. The pistol itself is loaded right now, full magazine, one in the chamber. If you notice with this, which I've never really seen before, but the extractor itself is actually painted red on top to show that the chamber itself is loaded. Obviously it sticks out and you could feel that if you're doing some kind of like press check or confirming the pistol is loaded, but you can also see that now. And just to that, you can see a very small gap in there to see your chamber is loaded as well. A couple nice things that, you know, in particular for the duty pistol, if you unload your pistol and completely at the end of the night, and you get ready for work the next day, you load your gun up, you confirm that the pistol's loaded, whether you check it like this, like checking your, your extractor, but now you can do a press check, confirm it's loaded, feel that, 
and you, you got all these different you know cues to show you your pistol's loaded because it's extremely important that if you're going to go to work protect lives that your duty gear is ready This all new Echelon is geared to be a full-fledged duty pistol. It's living up to the hype for us right now. We're well over 200 rounds to this thing, probably closer to about 500 rounds through it today. Not one single malfunction. I took it out of the box, lubed it how I do every single one of my pistols with a little bit of Lucas stuff, and just been running this thing. And it is functioning flawlessly. And no doubt about it, it has to, because some guys may have to depend their life on it. The Springfield Echelon so far is an absolute game changer. This pistol is frankly one of the nicest pistols to come out in a while. They didn't just take age old designs and improve upon them a little bit, they completely changed the game. They came out with a pistol that features a trigger blade safety, which a lot of people want, and a lot of agencies want, the variable interface system or VIS system for mounting any optic you want, a chassis system in here, the COG or central operating group. So that you could take this and change out the frames. There's interchangeable back straps, everything you need on this pistol, some gas pedals, good gripping surfaces, built from the ground up to be a hard use duty pistol. The only thing that I could probably say bad about it, make like the magwell a little bit bigger. If it's holding it back from being a duty pistol right now, it just needs proven. And today it's proven it to me. If I was gonna carry this as a duty pistol, I would shoot probably another thousand, 2000 rounds through this pistol because it's new and keep shooting and see how it does. But how it's wearing right now, how it's looking, how it's feeling in my hands, it's just like I took it out of the box. The pistol is a flat out shooter and it is 100% duty built. But until next time guys, make sure you like, comment and subscribe.